What's up there workforce, Chris here with work to game and we had a lot of videos this week on drama in the 14 community, drama in the WoW community. I, I haven't even watched Brian's post from this morning and it, it, I can already tell from the lovely comments that some of you don't like whatever he put up. Um, so I wanted to talk about gold sellers and I wanted to talk about tokens. Uh, I'm seeing some comments pop up around the 14 thing that this is going to help stop the real money transfers of gold, gold spammers, things like that. And uh, the community changes won't stop that. Anything where somebody can make real money at a point that justifies paying somebody to do it for them, uh, a wage. So if I can hire four or five guys at $5 an hour or, or whatever these gold spammers, I'm sure some of them are being paid less than that and they can go farm gold and then I can sell that gold or gill or whatever the currency is for more than $5, uh, one hour's worth of work for more than $5 and I can pocket the profits, that business isn't going anywhere. No amount of, of anything, and the profit margins are large enough that banning them doesn't do it because they just buy new clients under new credit cards. Uh, they, there just isn't a way to stop it. And the problem with it is it, fills the server with, um, you come across botters uh, who are just spamming something. Uh, it crashes the market for people that want to legitimately go farm those items. Um, if, they, if they're if they selling items to do it, um, it often encourages players who are going to take advantage of exploits because if you're doing it for the most gold per hour and you don't care if your account gets banned over a 90-day period um, of playing, that you know, hey, by the end of 90 days, odds are it'll have been banned. Uh, you're encouraged to do the most gold per hour and it also doesn't give any money back to the developer so you're you're basically buying pirated services uh, you're not buying pirated gold that's actually been um, debated in court cases is that you're not actually selling the gill or gold because you're not removing it from the game you're selling the service of getting it um, so in that aspect it's not like I guess illegal per se, but it is against the terms of service because they don't want people transferring real money that they don't have a part of to encourage behavior that doesn't foster a good community or a good set of gameplay. So how do you fix it? Well, honestly, we've seen it fixed. Um, EVE Online, WoW, others have fixed it by allowing you to buy in-game uh, in -game currency for out-of-game currency and what I mean by that is you sell subscription time. Uh, so while I can trade on my server, I think it's like 150 or 170,000 gold right now for $15 of battle.net currency. And that $15 can be automatically applied to a free month of WoW, or I can apply it to, um, I can apply it to a purchase. So I could, I could go save up $60 of battle.net money and I could buy the next game that comes out on the Battle.net store. Um, so if Diablo 4 ever releases, I could buy it with, with WoW Gold. Uh, and that's awesome. And it doesn't, it's not effective, like it's not efficient. Honestly, the amount that the average person farms per hour, it's well below the United States minimum wage uh, to pay for things that way. But what it does is like for players that have you know, like in, right, we have a problem in 14 right now where you have players who have so much money, they have no reason to engage back with the economy. And it's like, oh, well, if I could buy the Final Fantasy X remake with Gil, then maybe I would go back to really actively playing the markets because I enjoy playing the markets more than working a side hustle to get the extra money. And now I can feel like, oh, I'm playing a game to get a game. And so it's not in a very effective number of dollars per hour, but it is playing a game to get a game. And and I would rather play a game for four hours than work really hard for one in many cases. Um, so I that's that's why. Now let's explain the math on it because the, the, the reason that people don't want that to happen is they're afraid it will devalue Gil. First of all, you can't devalue Gil because Gil already doesn't have a purpose. The only purpose in the game right now is housing, which is sold out on, on a lot of servers. So if you don't have one now, there's no way to put your money into it. And it's not enough money to make the super rich players feel it. And the second is glamour. And you have to be somebody who wants to change your glamour continually and to very expensive things that you're not willing to farm for that to really add up to anything kind of substantial um, for the average player that just wants to wear a seasonal event piece with maybe, oh, I found this really cool 
um, chess piece that somebody I don't want to craft and somebody will craft for me. That's it. Like, there, oh, Blue Mage dropped. You know, I, several of us, I, I bought gear for my Blue Mage. I bought Vavnarian Onions when the market was high because that's when I needed it. So, yeah, I blew like 3 million gil in one day when Blue Mage dropped. Um, and I leveled my Blue Mage from 1 to 50 the first day. So, but 3 million gil is nothing. I mean, 3 million gil is, is it's not. It's not going, if these tokens sell, they're going to be more than 3 million gil. And I know there's plenty of players out there who don't have 3 million gil, but that's not what things like this are targeting. They're targeting players who are sitting at gil cap. People who are literally sitting on just hundreds of millions of gil in total worth of items and cash and all this, and they just don't have a use for it. And so let's talk about, <laughs> I feel like I've, I've been talking myself in a circle here. So the reason this doesn't lower the value, even though I don't, I already don't think you could lower the value, is because it doesn't sell gil. It sells the people's time who did the gil just like a real money transfer. But the difference is now the dev is doing it all above board. So this is a lot like talking about like a legalized pot trade or a legalized alcohol trade or a legalized tobacco trade, right? You have something that people want to do. You want it to be against the terms of service, but people are going to do it anyway. So you can either take it above board and have control over the system, or you can allow it to keep happening and try to ban it. Um, and it, it, is something that they have proven not to be able to ban. So by bringing it above board, you get to control how it's done. You get to make it safe. You don't have to hear about your players having their credit card information stolen. You don't have to hear about them having their account stolen. You don't have to. So all the time that customer support deals trying to, to deal with people calling in to say, hey, my account was hacked because I did something you told me not to do, that's all money saved by the developer. Not to mention that every time you sell this gold, it's like, okay, if I buy my WoW subscription in six month chunks, it's cheaper than $15 a month. But if I buy it with a WoW token, they got $15 for that WoW token. So they're effectively getting a premium rate for my WoW subscription if I move to paying it with gold. And that $15 came from a real player. So what you have is, imagine for a second that Brian is working 100 hours a week at his job, and he knows that when Gunbreaker drops, he's going to want a lot of money, and he doesn't have time to farm it. Well, something like the WoW system, what that allows for is it allows him to say, Chris, if you will go farm me up my money for my gunbreaker, I'll pay your sub for the month of August. So in the month of August, you know, you deliver, we get our, we get our new expansion in July. If you pay for my gunbreakers gear and all that, I will pay your subscription for the month of August. Now this works great. And, and I don't think that this is against the terms of service. I don't think this is unethical. I don't think he's done anything bad. I don't think I've done anything bad, but this all relies on me knowing Brian. Now, imagine that you set up basically like a public Craigslist meeting place where anonymously people who want to be me in that scenario and people who want to be Brian in that scenario can be paired with each other and they can be paired at an unlimited rate. So you can basically set up a market. As there's more people that line up in the gold line, then the amount of gold per dollar shifts in that favor because all these people want $15 and so it's the highest bidders that get it. So the amount of gold per token goes up. And as the people are willing to pay more and more and more for tokens because they don't want to spend real money, then you see that go 150,000, 170,000, 400,000, a million gold, right? And so you'd see it start this way with gil. It'd be 3 million gil, 5 million gil, 10 million gil per month. And it would just skyrocket um, because I, I made two million gil in like two days the other day. And so the idea that, and I'm not good at running the market. So when you talk about people who are, I imagine you could see it go 30 million gil. Um, and then you see people go, well, I mean, I've never even had 10 million gil, much less 30 million gil. I'd pay 15 bucks for that. And this line starts to fill up and they say, I'd pay 15 bucks for 30, for 20, for 10. And it balances out. And anytime people say, the amount of gold, gill, whatever I'm getting for my money isn't worth it. 
they stop buying these and they say I'd rather just pay my sub and this goes up and anytime this gets so high they're like well I could be super rich in trade for like one month sub all I gotta do is pay this one stranger sub one time and he'll farm me up a ton of gil conflict free instantly boom and that's before you even talk about people who use this to buy tokens and then there's a way to like play the tokens so you hold on to the tokens you see if they go up in value then you sell the tokens back that's before you even get into the speculation market side of these so it doesn't introduce new money now how would it cause inflation it would cause inflation if you actually introduced new currency into the game for it so if they were just printing money then every time somebody paid fifteen dollars this hundred and fifty thousand gold was just dumping into the game this 10 million gil whatever was just dumping into the game then the total gil pool on a server would be rising and it wasn't tied behind playtime there was nothing stopping it from going up infinitely right now get the amount of gil and gold that goes up in these games each month is bound by the most profitable activities that players are willing to do so if an average player makes a thousand gil an hour and the game has generated enough content that the player base on a server plays a thousand hours then that thousand gil times a thousand hours means there's a million gil created on the on the server that month and that's it and that's fixed but if you allow money to start coming in and without being tied to playtime just just shoot off then you could have two million three million four million gil introduced to that one and you've now diluted the currency um but that's not what's happening here you're trading real earned currency for real earned money it doesn't it doesn't screw the company out of money because they're still getting paid for that subscription time ironically at a higher rate so if anything it generates money um but not at a ridiculous rate because it's still just they're they're just letting somebody else pay your sub so if you were gonna pay, if you're paying the 15 dollars a month that's all that person paid for you so the only time they make money on the deal is if you're somebody who would traditionally buy your subscription time in bulk to get a cheaper rate and now you're letting somebody pay it at the month to month rate um that's the only way they make money on this so they're not really making money you're not really making money uh, you're not creating money it's just moving things around that's all it's doing um, what they can do is they can allow there to be like a small transaction fee so really maybe I pay 150,000 and you're only getting 140,000 um, they can kind of pull what they can be a money sink that way uh, they can also charge 15 bucks a month and they know that their average player across the entire player base make pays 1350 um, because they buy it in bulk usually uh, and so they know they're making on average that dollar fifty and so the the developer can come out a little bit ahead here but that's in trade for they, they don't then have to spend customer support time dealing with people who got their account hacked because they know that the whole thing's above board because they're controlling it and the real money transfer system disappears altogether because if I could get a million if I could get 11 million gil for my money and risk my account being hacked and risk being banned and risk all this or for 10 million gil I could have my subscribe you know pay the same amount of money and I could get 10 million and I could get it instantly from the market board and I'm not breaking any rules um, the 10 million is going to push those 11 million to where they have to start providing 20 and 30 and 40 to make it worth the risk and so you get to where gold people instead of doing oh I can pay these people five dollars an hour and still generate a profit gosh now I have to pay these people two dollars an hour and I'm breaking even and so you just kind of push them out of business um, because people that want to play the game will always play it cheaper than people who are paid to play the game um, as a matter of fact right now I pay to play these games so the idea that I'm farming money and I'm paying to do it um, yeah so I, I don't know if any of that made more sense I don't know if that sheds any light on it um, I know a lot of people are worried it's going to devalue currency and, and it's a legitimate fear. There just isn't any evidence. As a matter of fact, all the evidence points to the contrary. It gives money more of a purpose. It does not generate um, money for nothing. It takes money that was legitimately generated through farming, running dungeons, running quests, all of that, and it trades it not for playtime that they would normally be paid for but playtime they are being paid for just not by the money guy it's being paid by this other person who's now paying two subs three subs four subs on behalf of these players so 
all in all, if you have three players farming and one player buying all those three players gold, then you have four subs coming in on this side, and then you have all that money being generated on this side, and it's just washing out in the middle. And maybe maybe Square takes a little bit off the top, like an eBay or anything like that, but the RMT guy's doing the same thing. So I would rather Square have that money, um, and I would rather have an above board system that doesn't result in bans, doesn't result in accounts being hacked, and results in a much more transparent, how much is gold worth, a fair system that's scaled per server, um, that really just allows people to engage with this and gives me a reason to go level my crafters outside of hoping that the rebuilding of Ishgard is an interesting system. Uh, I think it's I think it's something this game needs. I think it's something this game will move towards. Uh, it's something that Yoshi P has definitely said he has an interest in. And it's something that I think has been for the betterment of WoW. I was worried it would devalue the WoW economy, but WoW has, it's like an 8% monthly inflation on average. It, it of course varies around patches and stuff, but your money, your money just, it, more money is introduced into the market every month than people have money sinks to use it on. Um, so if money's going to keep inflating, huh. <sighs> It, it's it's just good to have a use for it. It's just good to have a way to say, hey, if my money is going to be worth half as much buying power wise in six months, I might as well burn the money I'm not going to use on playtime and give it to somebody who's going to use it today. So I, I don't know. Interesting system. I'd love to know your thoughts. Why real money transfers are bad for games, um, I feel is pretty obvious. And why this is not going to hurt games, hopefully I've shed a little bit of light on and uh, I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Let's talk about it. My name is Chris with Work to Game. Hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you next time. Hey guys, it's me. Oh, well, if you don't know me, my name's Terry. I'm a beautiful Tyrannosaurus from Texas, and it just it doesn't get more country than that. I tell you what, I grew up in these parts. I was resurrected by a ghost. And that ghost told me that I need to come out and hang out on work to games YouTube channel to tell everybody they should totally hit that thumbs up. Thumbs down make Terry hungry. That it makes me hungry. You hear me? Hungry. Anyway, Terry, just keep it keep it together. Keep keep it together, Terry. Alright guys. So uh, with that doubt, that be sure to hit that thumbs up button and hit subscribe if you haven't already. To see more of me and my beautiful, my beautiful nose. Okay. Okay. All right. Good talking to you. I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you real soon. Terry, the Tyrannosaurus from Texas. <laughs>